Now, I'm going to start this video off by saying I know this is not the result that a lot of Buckeye fans are going to like. I mean, only scoring 35 points, only scoring seven points in the second half. This is embarrassing. This team is just not very good. Buckeye Nation, let's not overreact about this team now, okay? Look, we did what we had to do. We got the win. We looked more impressive than we did last week. I think the offensive line improved, and and I think we have ourselves a solidified QB1 on this team here as well. We'll talk about all that and more on this Ohio State fan reaction. We're going to review the game here against Youngstown State kind of talk about this team moving forward if you don't know me what's up tailgaters you're in the booth with tailgate nate today this is my ohio state fan reaction series i i, I do a uh, reaction the day after every single ohio state game th this season uh and today we're going to be talking about the second game this game here against youngstown state thank you guys so much for the support the channel has seen as of late if you guys want to continue to help support the channel uh the Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, share, really anything else you guys are willing and able to do to help me support my channel, especially if you are a Buckeye fan and you like watching these videos. I uh, highly suggest you go check out the other college football content that I release here uh, as well. If you do not check out my community posts, my top five takeaways from week two will be uploaded tomorrow. Just have scheduling conflicts, only have time to sit down and record this video today. I don't have time to record that video, so this is the only one you'll get today. But tomorrow, you'll get my top 25 and my week two takeaways. Sound good? All right, so with all the business out of the way, let's talk about the Buckeye football. A lot of people were worried. Sorry, English did not happen there. A lot of people were worried about this Ohio State offense coming out of that 23-3 win against the Indiana Hoosiers last week. And, well, I think this week, the Buckeyes kind of answered the bell. I know a lot of people maybe expected this team to score 50, 60 against this Youngstown state team uh but honestly guys i really think what this game did even though we only scored 35 points was really solidify our quarterback one which will be kyle mccord i really expect kyle mccord to get the bulk of the snaps from here on out and yeah against western kentucky next week we still might see devin brown play but to be honest guys devin brown was hyped up a lot and uh, from what i saw in camp and from what i read about him in camp it looked like that he may eventually push Kyle McCord for that starting job. Well, he got a lot of game time uh, in in this one here against Youngstown State and honestly just did not look as, as good as Kyle McCord did. Uh, Devin Brown was 7 of 13 for 101 yards, made some pretty good throws, but more so than Kyle McCord, he was missing more throws, wasn't really reading the field right. What Kyle, or excuse me, what Devin Brown is able to do is... You, you fear Devin Brown more as a rushing threat than you do Kyle McCord. That's not to say that Kyle McCord can't still uh, use his legs and be able to run the football if need be, but that's not his strength, right? Kyle McCord loves to sit back in the pocket, loves to make some throws. Uh, Marvin Harrison had a monster game, seven catches, 160 yards, two touchdowns. Emeka Egbuka with five catches, 94 yards, and a touchdown there as well. Julian Fleming uh, had three catches. Mayan Williams had a long reception carnell tate uh got some action in here a as well uh but but i thought kyle mccord really started to find his stride there in this game and not only that i thought the offensive line improved as well now granted i do not think this is as good a of a pass rush of a defensive front seven in youngstown state that the buckeyes saw with the hoosiers a week ago and it's gonna get a lot harder really really fast when we have notre dame here in two weeks but i did think the offensive line got better uh there were a couple costly penalties well i guess not costly because ohio state ended up winning the game but there were some again pretty bad penalties that i think are really easy fixes i think are things that you can fix really really e easily buckeyes had six penalties for 65 yards a lot of that happened to go on the o-line and, uh, well, that's definitely something that you can improve next week against Western Kentucky, but it's something that has to get better before that game against Notre Dame. Uh, but the, the entire point of me talking about this is, guys, I think that we have found quarterback one, and that is Kyle McCord. Uh, I think without a shadow of a doubt, he was the best player on the field yesterday, and who knows? Maybe it was just an off day uh, for Devin Brown. Maybe Ryan Day recognizes that, and maybe he shines in this game next week against Western Kentucky. But as to what we know right now and as to what we've seen from both of these quarterbacks, 
I really genuinely expect Kyle McCord to take most of the snaps uh, if the game is close. I expect him to run out there and be able to throw the ball, be able to sit composed in the pocket, and be able to deliver some very nice throws. Now, uh, I believe I mentioned it earlier, but I do want us to keep a couple packages for Devin Brown because you fear him more as a runner. You saw the defense for the Youngstown State Penguins do a little bit more shifting uh, and a little bit more moving around, a little bit more kind of making the defense maybe have a little bit more of a guessing game when Devin Brown was on the field. So I think we should keep a couple packages for him, a couple wildcat packages, things like that. But Kyle McCord should be the main one throwing the football for us. I think that much was proven in this game against the Youngstown State. Again, no longer worried about the receiving core, uh, the rushing attack. Well, that was fine. We had 27 carries, 123 yards, 4.6 yards per carry, two touchdowns, both of them in by Travion Henderson. Trainum was not as active in this game, but Travion Henderson looked really, really good. Mayan Williams looked really, really good. Uh, and again, this offensive line did get better. It did it improve. Uh, again, it, it's still got a lot of work to do. Yes, this offensive line still has a long, long, long way to go, but uh, the, the I think it definitely showed its growth, showed its improvement in this game here. And I'm excited to see it moving forward again, clean up those penalties like holdings, false starts. I don't really remember a whole lot of false starts from yesterday, but holding calls. Uh, um, Josh uh, Simons had a pretty egregious hands to the face call, which just can't happen. Uh, I mean, he ended up making making up for it on literally, I think, the very next play, if not two plays later. Um, but again, s stuff like that can easily, easily, easily be cleaned up. So not worried about the offense. I know it was not the offensive just juggernaut that a lot of people in Columbus are used to seeing. And I get that. But Buckeye fans, it is not time to overreact be and say, oh, well, this team is terrible. Why? We couldn't even put up 40 on Youngstown State. This team sucks. Um, th this team does not suck. This team, I firmly believe, is one of the best in the country. Yes, it has some growth and some work to do. And it definitely has a lot of room to grow, but that's just about what this early part of the season is, especially when you look at the way that Ohio State schedule is set up. These first three games were really to learn about each other, really to grow. I don't really think there was ever a threat for Ohio State to lose to Indiana, to lose to Youngstown State, and I don't think there will be a threat to lose to Western Kentucky next week, uh, but... The offense gets a chance to show out next week, uh, improve on what it's done. And uh, again, the scoring total did improve. The yards total did improve from last week. Kind of expect that to be the case there against Western Kentucky next week. Uh, we almost had 500 yards of offense uh, of offense this week against Youngstown State. Go put up 500 yards next week. Go put up, go put up 40 points again. This is a much better Western Kentucky defense than what we saw this week against Youngstown State. They got a lot of very good players there. But the strength of Western Kentucky is on the offensive end. They're a very high-octane, high-flying offense that love to take deep shots downfield. And that's what the Buckeye defense is going to have to be ready for. I truly do believe that this is the Buckeye defense first true test. I know a lot of people say, oh, your first true test is going to come uh, on September 23rd on the road in South Bend against Notre Dame. That's going to be the Buckeyes first true test. And while collectively, yes, it is going to be the Buckeyes first true test as a collective football team. This will be the Buckeye defense's first true test here against this Western Kentucky offense. Again, they love to throw the ball. It's high octane. It's fast paced. It's fun to watch. Uh, and the Buckeye defense is going to have their hands full. But um, I saw some pretty good things, right? And I definitely think that they got better against this Youngstown State team. Uh, I definitely think that they it improved. Uh, that quarterback pressure was really, really good. Michael Hall in the middle, Tyleek Williams in the middle were phenomenal. I would want to see maybe a little bit more from uh, the edge rushers. They're not really generating the stats per se, but they are affecting the game to a substantial degree. And uh, uh, come that N N Notre Dame game, you're probably going to have to be a little bit more dominant, um, probably be able to get to the quarterback a little bit uh, more effectively from uh, the edge instead of right through the middle, just because of what Notre Dame has on that offensive line. It's a world-class Notre Dame offensive line and the Buckeye edge rushers are going to have to be able to make work in that game. But from what I saw in this game against Youngstown state and going back to last week against Indiana as well, 
Guys, this defense looks like it could be one of the best in the country. The defensive line looks like it could be one of the best in the entire country. The linebacking unit looks really, really good. Tackling it in open space just does not seem to be a problem at all for this team, at least up to this point. Maybe a couple uh, instances here and there might disprove uh, what I just said there. But for the most part, guys, this Buckeye defense looks really, really good. Uh, year two under Jim Knowles is here. And this Jim Knowles system defense is working really, really well. Now, the Youngstown State was really able to beat us for the most part with that pass game, especially early on. Uh, their starting quarterback, Mitch Davidson, was 12 of 18 for 98 yards. It was a lot of short routes that really quickly started to add up uh, and get deep in this Ohio State defense. In fact, Youngstown State scored on their very, very first drive but if you'll notice, there are no more than seven points there in that little score column over there, which means that Youngstown State just, guys, look, they, this, this Ohio State defense kind of had a feel. This Youngstown State team came out with a good plan. I give them credit there for that first drive, but I was not panicking. I knew this Buckeye defense would settle down, and boy, did they ever. This defense looked mighty impressive throughout the rest of the game. Denzel Burke had an interception in the end zone. Guys, this secondary is aggressive for the past two games. Guys like Denzel Burke, Davison Igbenos, and Josh Proctor have just been all over receivers, but they do it without creating pass interference. That is the important thing for this Buckeye secondary right now. And I don't know what it is in me, but I do just kind of have a feeling that a guy like Denzel Burke, a guy like Davison Igbenos, is going to run it into some of those back judges that love to pull the yellow handkerchiefs out of their pocket and put laundry on the field and they're going to have three or four pass interference calls in one game. I could totally see it happening just because of how aggressive some of these players in the secondary are, especially the first two I mentioned in Burke and Igbenos. And again, Igbenos is the Ole Miss transfer. Uh, looked really good as a freshman for them last year and still looks really good as a Buckeye here early on in 2023. So defense, again, I'm not really worried about at all, but they do get their first big test here against th this Western Kentucky Hilltopper team. We've really seen two uh, two offenses here that kind of like to slow the pace down, that kind of like to control the clock. Well, Western Kentucky is not that. They like to go, 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 go. They like to score fast. They like to punch you in the mouth. And before you even realize what happens, or, or I should say, before you even realize what just happened, bam, they're out running the very next play. That is what Western Kentucky likes to run against a high octane, high flying offense. Don't know how many times I've said that throughout this video, but this Buckeye defense will get its first true test against the Western Kentucky Hilltopper offense here in that game. So all in all, I don't really have too many bad things to say uh, about uh, the defense. Sorry, I don't know why that took me so long to get out, but I really just don't have anything super bad to say about this defense, guys. I thought they played well. I thought they were aggressive, especially in that secondary and I have full confident faith in our defense moving forward, especially when we go against a team like Notre Dame. Again, I, I think this Western Kentucky game will be a, a little bit of a good benchmark as to what we can expect out of this Buckeye team when they go play the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. But I want to move back to the offense for a little bit because, again, I'm not worried about the defense at all. Until they give me a reason to worry, I mean, guys, we've averaged five yards allowed and uh, what, under 200 yards per game. Our defense is fine. Our defense is killing it. Our defense is creating pressure. Uh, the only thing that I really want to see get better throughout on this team are two things, two really big things that I'm, uh, uh, again, I said it in my uh, Indiana video, but I'm a little upset about it. One, penalties. I, I, and I mentioned it when I talked about the offense, but penalties have to get better. Uh, we had, again, six penalties for 65 yards. In case I didn't say that earlier, I can't quite remember if I did. But in case I didn't, there you go. Six penalties for 65 yards. That has to be cleaned up by the Notre Dame game. You cannot be giving a, a team like Notre Dame, even an offense like Western Kentucky, free yards if the penalties are on defense. But if the penalties are on offense, you can't back yourself up against a defense like Notre Dame because they will make you pay. They will pressure you. They will come after you. Notre Dame is good enough defense to be able to make you pay for your mistakes, even if it is not a turnover, even if it is just penalties that ends up backing you up 10 yards instead of a second and seven, you're looking at second and 17, right? Those are the big things that the Buckeyes are going to have to limit here, mo here moving forward. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, really no risk of us losing to Indiana, no risk of us losing to Youngstown State, probably no risk of us losing to Western Kentucky either, but you have 
You have to be able to limit those penalties, and you have to. Have to, have to, have to. This is the biggest thing I've seen from this Ohio State team early on. It plagued us last year. It seems like it's going to be plaguing us again this year, but third downs. Well, okay, that's a lie. Third downs didn't really plague us plague us last year, uh, besides when they were in the red zone. Thirds down, third downs in the red zone were not the, the Buckeyes' strength at all last year. This year, it just seems like third downs in general are really hard for this team. Uh, last week against Indiana, I believe we were two for 12, and a lot of those were third down and short, which honestly just kind of inexcusable there. This week, we got a little bit better. We were five for 12, but it's still not over the 50% mark, which against defenses like Indiana, maybe it's a little bit more understandable. Indiana's got a lot of dynamic players on the defensive side, but against an FCS level defense, a team that was around middle of the pack in the FCS la last year and the Youngstown State Penguins, I mean, they could be a pretty solid FCS team this year. Who knows? But against a defense like that, you should be converting more than 50% of your third down marks, which Ohio State just did not. And that's something that's going to have to improve greatly because when you go up against a defense like N Notre Dame and you're struggling to convert on these third downs, especially third down and short against defenses like Youngstown State, and if it continues next week against Western Kentucky, we might not convert a third down at all against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, in which case the game plan would just have to be get five yards at least every single play. That would have to be the game plan, which – for, for as high octane as this Ohio State offense can be is realistic, but it probably is not going to work all the time when you have to go up against a defense like the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. So learn to convert on those third downs, especially, especially third down and short. That has to improve and that has to improve quickly because, uh, uh, again, especially early on, if this Western Kentucky game turns into a shootout where the, the teams are just flying back and forth, right? Ohio State's going to need to be able to convert on those third down, especially those third down and short opportunities that we've had so many of here in these first two games and just really haven't been able to take full advantage of those at all. But um, kind of to summarize this video, in case you just kind of skip to the end, Kyle McCord is QB1. I think we should keep a couple packages for Devin Brown, but I thought Kyle McCord looked way better than Devin Brown in – in that past game, the offense, while again, a lot of Buckeye fans are going to complain and say we didn't even score 50. This offense is terrible. This offense needs a little bit more time to grow. And again, if we would have played Kyle McCord, in, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but if we would have played Kyle McCord instead of Devin Brown in a couple of those series, we might have walked away with 49 points here. I genuinely do believe that if Kyle McCord were to play some series where Devin Brown did and just miss some throws, those are throws that Kyle McCord was making all game long and was on the money for. So if Kyle McCord would have played a little bit more, probably could have come away with some more points. And that's not trying to hawk on Devin Brown at all. I think the kid has a very, very bright future, whether he stays in the Scarlet and gray or whether he ends up transferring elsewhere. If Kyle McCord were to come back next year, I think Devin Brown uh, again has shown some uh, ability. Uh, he can put a lot of zip on the ball and he's a great dual threat option. I think his future is bright, but he has a lot of room to grow. The other thing I want to see out of Kyle McCord, if he is the guy that's going to be quarterback one, which I think a, a lot of Buckeye fans, even head coach Ryan Day, probably believes now that Kyle McCord is that proven and bona fide QB one, is he needs to distribute the ball a little bit better. There were a lot of times where he'd look to Marvin Harrison, stare at him for a couple seconds, and then finally move on to his next read. Or there was a play, Julian Fleming was running wide open down the sideline, uh, and instead, Kyle McCord decided to flip it to Marvin Harrison Jr. right in the middle of the field. Uh, I believe we ended up scoring on that drive anyway, but it's, again, being able to survey the field a little bit better if you are if you are Kyle McCord, limit the penalties, limit the, uh, or, or I shouldn't say limit, but convert on those third down opportunities, especially those third down and manageables. And this is the team that's going to go really, really far. We got Western Kentucky next week. Going to be a good test for our defense. Uh, can't wait to watch this team here moving forward again. Two weeks until that big one against Notre Dame that the college football world is talking about. But that's going to do it for this Ohio State fan reaction. Let me know your thoughts on the game and on the Buckeyes in the comment section down below. And as always, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.